Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCutter.com. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how we can implement our remove method for our binary search tree. So to get started, we're going to be creating a helper class called node. And this node class is going to have the following data members. It's going to have data, which holds the data for our node. And here we're going to have a pointer to the left and right child nodes. Now here, we're going to have a one argument constructor, which is getting passed in data. We set our data to the data being passed in here. And then we just initialize our left and right pointer to null. And that's just to symbolize that this node has no children. Moving on to our main class, we have a private data member called root. And this is going to be the pointer that points to the root of our binary search tree. And here we have our no argument constructor which is going to initialize the root to null to symbolize that our tree is empty. Now from here, we have our remove method and our remove method is going to take in the data that we want to remove from our tree. And we're going to call a method called remove private. And we're going to pass in the data as well as the root pointer. Moving on here, we have our remove private method. Our remove private method is being passed in the data that we want to remove as well as the root pointer. Just as a side note, our root pointer is being passed in by reference. So we're working with the original and not a copy. So now if we hit any of these three conditions, that means that we're currently searching for the node that we have to delete. So our if statement is just testing to see if the root is null. If it is, it means that our tree is empty. So there's nothing to delete. So we just return. If we were to come down here, we test to see if the data is less than the data at the current node. And if it is, that means we can recursively call our remove private method, passing in data and the left child of the node that we're currently at. So that basically means that we continue our search within the left subtree. Now here, if the data is greater than the data at our root, we make a recursive call to our remove private method once again passing in data and the right child of the current node that we're at, essentially continuing our search within the right subtree. Now, if we reach this else statement, that means we successfully found a node that we want to delete. So there are three different kinds of nodes that we can delete. The first kind is a leaf node. So if we were to reach this if statement, we're testing to see if the node has any children. If it doesn't, we can simply delete the node and then set the pointer to null. If we were to reach either of these else if statements here, that means that the node only has one child. So the node's left child is null. That means that this node has a right child. So we set a temporary pointer to point to the node that we want to delete. And this is just so that we could delete it later. We then advance our root pointer to point to the right child of the node we're about to delete. And finally, we delete the node. And if we were to come down here, we're testing to see if the right child is null. If it is, that just means that the node has a left child. Once again, we create a temporary pointer to the node that we want to delete. And then we advance our root pointer to point to the left child of the node we're about to delete. And finally, we delete the node. Moving on, if we were to reach this else statement, that means that our node has two children. So I went over two ways to go about deleting a node within my deletion overview. The way that I'm going to go about deleting a node with two children in this video is by finding the minimum data within our right subtree. So if we take a look at our find minimum method, we get passed in the right child. So we're searching the right subtree and we essentially just use a while loop to keep going left till we hit null. Once we hit null, that means we found the minimum value within our right subtree. And then we replace the data of the node we're currently at with the minimum value within our right subtree. We recursively call our remove private method, which is going to go down our right subtree to remove the duplicate. So from that recursive call, we will need to find a node once again. So it will go through these three conditional statements to find the node. And finally, if it reaches either of these statements, it will get deleted. All right, so now let's go over an example. So let's say that I'm given the following tree 
and that I want to delete 50 from it, which is a leaf node. All right, so first from our main function, we invoke our remove method. So let's push that on top of the stack. And again, we're using a stack to keep track of our recursive calls. From there, our remove method invokes our remove private method and passes in 50 as well as the pointer to our root node. So that gets added on top of the stack. Now within our remove private method, first we check to see if the root is null. It's not, so we move down here. We check to see if the data is less than the data at the current root. It is, so we go left by making a recursive call to our remove private method and passing in the data in the left child of the current node that we're at. So that gets pushed on top of the stack. Now we're inside of our remove private method once more. Is the root equal to null? It's not, so we move down here. Is the data less than the data at the node we're currently at? It is. So once again, we make a recursive call to our remove private method, passing in the data and the left child of the current node that we're at. And this as well gets pushed on top of the stack. Executing our remove private method once more. Is the root equal to null? It's not. So we move down here. Is the data less than the data at the current node we're at? It's not. So we come down here. Is the data greater than the data that we're currently at? It's not. So we finally hit our else block. So is the left child pointer and the right child pointer equal to null? It is. So now we can remove this node from our tree and then we set it to null. Once we do that, we finish executing our remove private method. So this gets popped off the stack. We return to our remove private method from before but now this is also done executing, so this gets popped off the stack. We return to our previous remove private method. And once again, this remove private method has finished executing, so we can also safely pop this off the stack as well. We now get return to our remove method, which has finished executing our initial remove private method. So this gets popped off the stack. And finally, we get return to our main function which can now continue executing the rest of our program. So we pop this off the stack as well. All right, so that was an example of deleting a node with no children. So let's give another example. So now let's delete a node with one child. So let's say that I want to delete 125 from our tree. So once again, from our main function, our remove method is invoked. So it gets pushed on top of the stack. Now we're inside of our remove method. And our remove method invokes our remove private method, passing in the data and our root pointer. So that gets pushed on top of the stack. Moving on, we test to see if the root is null. It's not. So we move down here. Is the data less than the data of the node that we're currently at? It's not. So we come down here. Is the data greater than the data of the node we're currently at? It is. So we continue to search for the node we want to delete by searching the right subtree. So we push this on top of the stack. And once again, we test to see if the root is null. It's not, so we move on. We now test to see if the data is less than the data at the current node that we're at. It's not, so we move down here. And finally, we test to see if the data is greater than the data at the node that we're currently at. It's not, so that means we found the node that we wanna delete. So we move on to our else statement. So now we test to see if the node that we want to delete has no children. This fails, so we go down here. Does the node that we want to delete's left child pointer equal to null? It doesn't, so we move down here. Does the node we want to delete's right pointer equal to null? It is, so the first thing that we want to do is create a temporary pointer to point to the node that we want to delete. We then set root to point to the left child of the root. And then finally, we're able to remove the node from our tree. So now that our remove private method is done executing, we can now pop this off the stack. We return to the previous remove private method, which is also done executing. So we pop this off the stack as well. We then return to our remove method, which has now finished executing. So this gets popped off the stack. And finally, we return to our main function, which gets notified that our remove method has finished executing, so we could pop this off the stack as well. 
Now moving on to our last example, our main function invokes our remove method. So this gets pushed on top of the stack. From here, our remove method invokes our remove private method, which gets in the data and the pointer to our root node. So we push that on top of the stack. Now we're inside our remove private method. So first we test to see if the root is null. It's not, so we move down here. Is the data less than the data of the node that we're currently at? It's not, so we go down to the next else if statement. Is the data greater than the data of the node that we're currently at? No, it isn't. So that means that we've already found the node that we're going to delete. So we move on to the else statement. So are we dealing with a node with no children? We're not, so we could skip this. Are we dealing with a node whose left child pointer is null? We're not, so we can move on. Are we dealing with a node whose right child pointer is null? We're not, so we can now move to our else condition. So first, we need to invoke our find min function, passing in the right child of the node that we're currently at. And this is just to search the right subtree for the smallest value within it. So now let's push find min onto the stack. So now we're inside our while loop and we just keep going left until we find the minimum value. We then simply return. We return back to our remove private method. So now let's pop find min off the stack. We now set the node that we currently want to delete the data to the minimum value within the right subtree. We then recursively call our remove private method, passing in the data and the right child pointer so we could delete the duplicate value within the right subtree. So we push this on top of the stack. So we test to see if the root is null. It's not, so we move down here. Is the data less than the data of the node we're currently at? Yes, so we go left and we keep searching by making a recursive call to our remove private method. So we push this onto the stack once again. Is root equal to null? No, it's not, so we move down here. Is the data less than the data of the node that we're currently at? No, it's not, so we move down once again. Is the data greater than the data of the node that we're currently at? No, it's not, so that means we found a node that we wanna delete. So we move on to our else statement. Is the left child pointer and the right child pointer equal to null? Yes, it is. So we just delete the node and then we set the pointer to null. Now that we finish executing our remove private method, we pop it off the stack. We return to our previous remove private method. And since this has finished executing as well, we can pop this off the stack. And for the last time, we get returned to our remove private method, which as well has also finished executing. So we could pop this off the stack. We then get returned to our remove method, which has finished executing, which gets popped off the stack. And we finally get returned to our main function, which gets notified that our remove method has finished executing. So it in turn also gets popped off the stack. So that's pretty much the ins and outs of how we could delete nodes from within our binary search tree.